This meeting is being recorded. Hello, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to another amazing episode of Conversation with Freedom. Today, I'm joined by a very special guest, Brie Austin. Welcome to my podcast and good to have you. Hey, it's great to see you and it's really great to be on. Thank you so much. Oh, for someone who never heard of Brie Austin, please introduce yourself. <laughs> So I do, I'm an adult film creator in mainstream, and I'm also a content creator as well for most of all of the platforms. Oh, when, did, when did it all begin? Take us back. It started, my porn anniversary is in July. So it started July of 2022, because it'll be two years in this July. Oh. And... It's been great. I've been fortunate enough to be on a handful of pro sets and then my own content creation and my new store with Adult Empire yeah. and then my, my partnership with The Flourish. Before you, before you got into the industry, what were you doing? I had a lot of jobs before I was in the industry. I actually have a criminal justice degree wow. and I own, an, I know, I, and I own an insurance company for 20 years. Yeah. And now I also do, uh, I do PR work as well. Um, I'm an admin assistant for Don Juan DeMarco and his PR firm. Mm -hmm. So I do that as well. And then the decision, how did the decision to get into the industry come about? It was actually, you know, no one really ever chooses to, to go into it. It just kind of finds. <laughs> and so yeah. I was in the lifestyle as a unicorn. And the guy I was with actually said, you know, you'd be great at porn. Oh. And I told him he was full of crap. And then he told me on one of the largest porn sites in the world. And so I was like, oh, well, we'll try it out. We'll give it a year and see what happens. And it's gone good ever since. <laughs> <laughs> what, what is it that you like most about being in the industry? <laughs> I think it's a sense of, it took me, uh, when I was in the outside world before the industry, I didn't really have a sense of really good community yeah. and, and people that supported us. Mm -hmm. And now I'm in the industry and a lot of my has changed on a lot of things um, from, you know, legalizing sex work that I see no reason why it shouldn't be legal to, um, you know, things that have gone on in, 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 in our industry. But at the end of the day, they're all my family. Mm. And we may have personal fights and arguments, but at the end of the day, it's a sense of family and it's a sense of fun and we're creating art and we're giving something, <laughs> we're teaching people, right? Because if you didn't have porn, you'd have no idea. <laughs> <laughs> Do you have any friends in the industry? I do. Um, where I live in Phoenix is kind of a cross spot yeah. for a lot of people in the industry. Uh, Regan Fox lives in Arizona um, and, you know, a whole bunch of other uh, stars, too. My friend Zane Walker actually lives down the road. Um, and so, you know, we all tend to be we know each other in the industry. Um, if we haven't met when we do meet, it's like meeting a long lost friend because you followed mm. them on Twitter for so long. Um, but it's, it's kind of nice because in Arizona, Vegas is close by where I have a lot of friends and then I have a lot of friends in LA. So it's within a six to a, four to a six hour drive wherever I'm going. Mm. And speaking of friends and family, how did, when they found out that you, you are actually shooting content, how did they react? I was I was actually, I was really, um, I'm really fortunate to have a wonderful, wonderful parents, but my mom passed. And so I have a dad and a stepmom mm -hmm. and my dad and I have always been close. And so when I told him what I was going to do, he said, okay, um, you know, I just need you to be safe. Cause he didn't really understand the industry or, or how it worked. Mm. So he's like, when you go on set, I need you to send me emojis that you're okay. And I'm like, yeah, these are I'm pretty sure I'm okay. But no, no, 
he's got to get me to send these stupid emojis so you can see me when I get on set with my phone. I'm like, emoji. <laughs> um, that's their yeah. code word, right? Yeah. Certain stupid emojis. But he um, now he's kind of into it. Um, like I had to put porn blockers on my computer, so or on his computer, so that I never come up. Um, so like he knows I'm in the industry, and he's proud of the accomplishments I tell him, and he gets excited for me to be happy. Yeah. And that's all he said is he said as long as it provides you a good life and you're happy with it and you're safe. And he's like, have at her, be great, retire early. <laughs> <laughs> and speaking of being safe and mm -hmm. being in the industry, because a lot of people have a lot of assumptions and they have, please talk, please talk, talk to us about that. Yeah, so a lot of people have misconceptions of how, of how the industry actually works. Mm -hmm. um, so we have to be tested every 14 days. Yeah. Um, and it's a full panel test, um, for every STI and we are swabbed each way from Sunday. Mm -hmm. Um, and so people don't realize the cost of that testing is, is quite expensive. So we are very safe because none of us want to lose on work and, and we mm -hmm. don't want to pay for a, cost of a test that we didn't need. Mm -hmm. Um, cause the tests are close to, you know, $360 every time. Yeah. So we try to maximize those. Um, and, you know, on set, it's actually a, a lot different than what people think it is. Yeah. Um, you know, like there's a lot of people in the room, there's people watching. The companies are very conscious on, um, because stuff has happened in the past, they're very conscious now of consent. Yeah. Um, there's an in interview. So before you go perform, you hold up your ID and you state a script um, and they tell you what's going to happen and you sign and agree to that or contractual signings. Um, and then but when you're done, this do an outtake interview with you and Whoa. make sure that everything went okay, everything was to your standards, everything was done with consent. So on a pro set, I've never felt unsafe. It's been long days, but it's never been unsafe. <laughs> And then, is it awkward to do it in front of camera, or you you don't? It for a for a normal person, it probably freaks you out. Yeah. Um, because I've done it so often, you don't. It's almost second nature, mm. where you're conscious of where the camera is, conscious of opening up your body, um, and then you know you'll have a director that's nagging you, right? You'll be like, open up your body, open up your body to the camera. Like, we're all tired of that freaking phrase. <laughs> but we're like, you say something else. Um, <laughs> it's like, I don't want to hear about this. So you're almost, like, you're so used to it that when the camera's not on you, you don't really know what to do. You're like, <laughs> what yeah. do I do? <laughs> Take us to your face scene. Oh, God. Type? That was my first ever collab was when I first started. Yeah. And that was really easy because that was, you know, was someone I had talked to. It was at home. It was very comfortable. My first pro scene would have been Blow Bang Girls, I think it was. And it was nerve wracking, right? Like, oh, you're wow. like, uh, what am I doing? <laughs> um, like, is this a good life choice right now? Um, <laughs> you do it and you're like, oh, that was easy. And you just get used to it. Like the first one scares the crap out of you. But as long as you, you know, you can power through that and know what you're doing. And then each set that you're on, you learn something different, mm. right? I, I always like to ask my directors questions. Like, why do you do, I'm like a two-year-old. Like, mm. why, 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 why do you do this? And I'm sure they're like, holy shit, does she ever stop asking this question? <laughs> like, no, right? I'm like, I'm learning. Like, I need better camera work, guys. Like, you know, my poor team's speed director, I'm sure I talked to him for an hour about camera. Work, yeah. And he was like, 
he's a good friend of mine now, but I'm sure he hated me that day. <laughs> what are some of the challenges that you you come across? Um, I think discrimination is a, is one of them. Um, you know, because there's so much political divide. Um, you know, one side hates us, one side is okay with us. Mm -hmm. Um, but we kind of get caught up in the middle. Like, you know, there's a lot of, do we do it to ourselves sometimes? Yes. But, you know, there's been a lot of bad stories that have come out this year about the industry and certain things and then mm -hmm. age verification laws and, and all of that stuff. And then, you know, society, I have really great friends and, and I'm really lucky because I'm very open about what I do, yeah. but you know, I uh, have, I have people walked away from me of what I, because of what I do for sure. Uh, mm -hmm. Banking discrimination is another one, right? I have, I have six different bank accounts because I'm scared at any day, someone's going to shut one down. So I have to know where mm -hmm. money in different places. So even though it's a legal business and what we do, banks still can decide that they don't want us, which, you know, a lot of organizations are trying to change but that's one of the, you know, you'll see it on Twitter is one of the girls said, oh, my bank account was seized. Mm. Um, and then, you know, you, people don't realize the heavy admin, like this is a lot of work. I always mm. say to people, if you're going to get in the industry, just know it's a lot of work because it's 1% is sex, 99% is admin work. <laughs> and, and, and people think it vice versa. Like they think it's 99% and then it's 1% of work. So they don't yeah. really understand. They're like, oh, like, easy. I'm like, oh, like you have scheduling and you have, you know, all your content, you have your editing, you have uh, what's dropping where and, you know, talking to fans. And, and there's only 24 hours in a day, right? Mm. So a lot of us have regular jobs. Um, or or do something else, and so it it can be a lot, but we also love it. So we just don't sleep very well. <laughs> <laughs> any any advice for someone who wants to get in the industry? I think um, make sure you're doing it for the right reasons. Um, make sure you have a game plan. So you know what I always tell people is, what do you want your brand to be? Like, just don't throw out content. You're throwing out content in a sea of million creators, right? Mm -hmm. So what do you want your brand to be? Um, make sure you have great lighting. Like, it doesn't take a lot of money to start. Yeah. But, you know, you want to have, do all your paperwork. You want to have all your lighting. Um, what's your brand going to be? Um, how do you approach creators? It's a lot. And... I advise anyone before they go into the industry, yeah. um, probably take a month and try to figure out what you want to do mm. and then go from there. Because it's not like if you just are like, oh, well, I'm just going to have sex and throw up a video. Yeah, no, that's not going to work then. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> All right. <laughs> yeah. Uh. But it's it's a rewarding industry, and I think if if you ever want, I always tell people, um, do I regret it? No. Yeah. And I'm in it for the rest of my life. I'm not going to perform for the rest of my life, um, because that's it's hard on your body. Yeah. But I then I'll get into the production side and I'm doing the PR side. And, mm. you know, no matter what I do, I'll be in the industry for the rest of my life. Before you got into the industry, did you watch porn? I did. And so, like, I knew a lot of these people, right? And so <laughs> I still have these fangirl moments of, like, you know, people that I have watched their porn for years, you know, all of a sudden they follow me. What, what, what are some? I'm I'm sorry to catch you. What are some of the people who you you used to watch? The names. I always watched Brandy Love, right? Like I I think I've loved that woman since like the moment she was like ever born into porn. Um, <laughs> and so I've always loved her, and I followed her career, and I think she's a really classy lady, and um, I think she handles fans well, and so I kind of wanted to like 
watch her and learn. Mm. And so when she followed me, I pretty much had a heart attack on the ground. I was like, oh my God, Brandy Love follows me. I can retire today. Wow. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> when the idol follows you, you're done. Like, I don't know. I don't know how it's going to get better than this, right? <laughs> And there's, there's other ladies like Reagan Fox, Tanya Tate, Sarah J. Like those are icons. Like <sighs> there's never going to be those girls. Like I, I will come in that generation, but like those are I don't know. To me, those are women that I just I stand in awe of of what they've accomplished mm. and how good they are at what they do. Mm. Did you get the opportunity to work with some of the people who you used to watch? No. I, well, it was funny, actually. I haven't gotten an opportunity to work with, because, um, like, Milf Gilf, they stick me with the younger generation. Oh. Um, but I got to work with, you know, a lot of people that I watched um, as I was coming into the industry. Yeah. And I got to work with some amazing people and really fortunate. And people are always like, oh, is there a certain person you want to work with? And I'm like, no, because I like everybody. I look at the directors yeah. and how how they portray their scenes. And so I have a bucket list of directors. <sighs> everybody has a bucket list of stars. I have yeah. a bucket list of directors. <laughs> <sighs> Talk to me about that. Because I only, I don't even see the end of oh. it and the stuff. Yeah, I, I, you know, like our directors, like there's so many great directors in in porn. Mm -hmm. um, and they've been in it for years. Um, and the great sites, like, you know, you have your, I'm always going to love Brother Love more than ever, any, because he's my first director. But, you know, him and Craven and Jim Powers and Mike Kassar and Ricky Greenwood, David Lord, you know, like you've got... I could go on like for yeah. a year. Yeah. They're just, they're amazing people and they create such different art mm -hmm. that everything's, you know, you're like, Oh, I want to be on Miss X or I want to be a Ricky Greenwood production. Like Jesus Christ, Ricky Greenwood. It's like the Steven Spielberg of porn, right? Like mm. every, we all drive to be extras on this man's set for free. Like if we could, wow. because, like, like he's, People don't get, in my humble opinion, I understand Hollywood's great, okay? Yeah. But a lot of that is digital special effects. We don't get the benefit of that anymore. So these guys create real camera angles and real art Yay. without computer digital graphics. And so those guys in porn are better directors, they're better sound yeah. guys, they're better yeah. than Hollywood ever will be. Yeah, that's a, that's an eye opening because I I have never <laughs> said that to me. Yeah, they don't they don't have help, right? Like we don't have AI help. Um, so you better get your you better get your lighting right, or you're gonna be wasting somebody's money, you know. And and these yeah. are and and Bri, speaking of money, does the industry yeah. pay well? <laughs> uh, yeah, obviously women. That we're women, uh, it's the one industry women are higher paid than men by far. Um, the women's salaries are higher. And then, you know, we all make more money on our own sites because, um, mm -hmm. you know, that's going daily while, you know, we're doing stuff. We're a pro set. We're, we're not paid residuals. We're paid a flat scene rate and then we're done, right? Mm -hmm. But it's kind of like where it feeds into each other. You know, the, the pro work brings exposure and fans to your own mm -hmm. sites. Mm. Um, so it's kind of like a big circle where it makes you money. Mm. Are you an independent? Are you an independent creator or you your signed? I, to I, I was with uh, no, actually, I'm I'm signed to an agency now, yeah. um, which is the Flourish, um, and so now I do a lot of work with them. Um, they do all my pro bookings. They do most of my collab bookings, event booking. They do all of that. Um, and then I do some other collabs on, on the side in the industry. Yeah. Um, but they do all of that stuff now for me. So God bless them for that. <laughs> and then being an independent and then working for, for an agency. 
you know, a lot of girls like to self book. Um, and I did for a while and I got a lot of great contacts. Yeah. Um, it just starts to become overwhelming. Um, and especially running your sites and all of that stuff. So having an agent, um, you know, I always tell people have an agency, which is great because I have the flourish to help me. Um, and they're a management company. So they help me with branding and stuff. So it's a little bit more. Um, and they have a lot of stuff they do that works with our, my ecosystem and then have a public relations specialist, which I do with Don Juan. And, and now I'm working with him. Um, that's the biggest thing, right? Cause you got to pay to promote your stuff mm-hmm. and I'm not good at promo, right? I, I, how do I do this? And so I was fortunate enough to meet Don Juan and he taught me everything. Mm. All of the stuff I didn't know, he taught me. <laughs> I was like, oh, <laughs> oh. And he teaches me every day, and that's why I work with him because I learn so much. Like, I learned how to do a call sheet, I, I learn all these things I never knew. <laughs> <laughs> oh. um, what do you look for if you want? to work with someone, let's say a male, a male, a male, a male. Yeah, sure. Um, like what I look for, you know, is how, how are you going to fit into my brand? Um, mm-hmm. Which is, you know, like I have a different, a few different series. Um, and then I look at like, what's your brand? Like how, how do you portray yourself? What's mm-hmm. your vision? Um, mm-hmm. How is this yourself for your fans and my fans? Is it, you know, a fair trade? Um, those types of things. Um, so I, I work with, you know, the, a lot of people in Arizona because a lot of them I know. Yeah. Um, and then once you know industry people, um, you just, you know, you're part of a collab group and, you know, I'll say, hey, I'm going to LA or hey, I'm going to Vegas. Who's interested? And then people just DM you and, and you go from there. I said it's it's an interesting like it's it takes you some time to get there to like collab with different people yeah. um and now it's great right like I don't really have to look for it um but it's you know, and you want to pick people that you're comfortable with, right? Mm-hmm. Like, how do they approach you? Are they polite when you approach you? Like, because this is business, right? Like, I'm, I'm not there to hang out with you. I'm there to shoot and go home, right? Like, we're, <laughs> we're doing this for business here, guys. Um, <laughs> you're, still friends, right? you're, you're still friends with everyone you meet, but it, it's a business transaction. Mm-hmm. And so you just kind of get used to that, right? Like, you're you're more interested in, okay, where's the lighting? Where is the cameras going? It just becomes kind of like second nature work to you. And then, don't you, maybe, I'm just going to give you an example. Let, let's, yeah. say you work, let, let, let's say you work with someone and then mm-hmm. you shoot and you're done. Don't you maybe want to do it again? Oh, like, well, sh- we may shoot another scene for sure. Um, but usually, it, like, it sounds so bad, but we're so packed within a day mm. that we schedule our collab time where we're pr- we may shoot one video or we'll shoot two. Um, but it's usually within, you know, one to three hours, and then you're off to something else or you're on to mm. another scene mm. because we're trying to generate all that stuff we do, right? So we don't get a lot of time to just – sit and hang out it's like okay you gotta go like shit i'm late for something right and so and we all know that right so that's why when we go to these conventions um it's the one time we actually get to sit down and talk with each other and see each other right it's like oh my god how are you doing like (laughs) like so yeah how's the conversation like in those conventions how, how, what do you guys talk about? Oh, we just, you know, it's our, it's our catch-up time. So um, 
a lot of people you follow throughout the year in Twitter, but you live live in different cities. Mm. So you have a lot, you meet each other. Um, and so you get to meet in person, which is great. And then you see people um, that you haven't seen, you know, for the last six months. And mm. even though even though we're all friends, we're busy, so we don't get to talk. Um, and so then you see each other at the convention and it's, it's like a long lost family. Like everybody's hugging everybody because nobody's seen anybody for like a month. Right. So wow. it's basically, you know, it's like a big, one big family reunion. What, what are some of your favorite scenes? Um, I really liked working. I did Perv Nana with Team Skeet. That was, uh, I got great co-stars on both scenes. So those were those were two of my favorites. Um thank God, what are my other favorites? I work with AZ Porn Star and Chocolate Beast here in Arizona, Robin Rabbit. Those I love those. I don't really have like a favorite scene because I like all my people. Like yeah. every time I get to go work on a set, I'm like, yay! Like <laughs> and I'm happy. Right? I'm just like, yeah, this is fun. Bri, if you're not working, if you're not yep. working, what do you do? What's your day like if you're not working? Uh, well, usually because I hold three jobs, I'm always working. Um, today, today was my day off, which was nice. But today wasn't really a day off because then I do all my social media stuff. Oh. Um, but yeah, when I'm not working, I try to spend some time with my family. Like I have family here in Arizona. Yeah. Um, I have a boyfriend, so um, it's great to be a part of this crazy life I'm in. Um, and so, you know, we'll spend time together. I have a dog. She's down here on the ground. She's asleep. Um, <laughs> Mom is not by bedtime. Um, but I'll spend time with her, friends. Um, I always try to decompress at least one day a week where I just stay off social media. I shut my computer down and um, for today, I went out for a couple hours in the sun, which is why I'm kind of red, mm -hmm. um, and just lay by the pool for a couple hours. And I don't even bring my phone. I'm just wow. like, nope, I'm by the pool. <laughs> you just want to be by yourself and just enjoy. Yeah. Look at me, just let me read. I just want to read. I just wanted to read part of a book that I've been reading. And I'm like, I don't want anybody around me. And it was nice because it was. It's Wednesday today, so like everybody's at work. None of my neighbors are there, so I could sit by the pool in peace. <laughs> mm, and how important it, how, how important is is it to sometimes detach and be yourself? You have to because you get um, you kind of get social media overwhelmed. Like it can almost cause an anxiety in you mm. because you're like, oh, well, this is happening and this is happening and this is happening. But you have to remember what's happening in your own life. Oh. Um, and so that's what I do is usually Sundays. I just, people will notice my Twitter, I'm usually dead quiet on Sundays. Um, I'm watching golf or I'm watching sports or wow. I'm by the pool with my friends. Sundays are a day that I have always just, no, I'm not doing anything. Like, oh. it's my day. <laughs> and speaking of anxiety, there are a lot yeah. of people who are depressed. Yes. And what kind of advice would you give to someone who's struggling, who's having a tough time? I always tell people because, you know, everybody doesn't take mental health. I think there's still a shame and a stigma to it. And I don't really understand that. It's, yeah. it's the same as sex. There's a shame mm -hmm. and stigma to that. So what I tell people, with, if you're feeling depressed, don't hold it in. You know, you need to talk to someone, whether that be friends or family. Um, but usually what I always tell people is, I know it sounds scary, but is to go to a mental health professional. Mm -hmm. Because there's people that are trained for that. You know, some people only need therapy. Um, I went, I've been to therapy. I think I was in therapy for two years. Um, wow. And then I was on medication uh, for one point. I'm not now, but um, I had to correct brain, brain patterns. Right. So I always tell people, if you're depressed, make sure that you seek out treatment. Don't try to self-medicate because um, that's never going to work. Mm -hmm. So, you know, and there's so many, as long as you have good resources around you and some people just don't have access to it. But mm -hmm. it is getting 
better. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you for 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 sharing that. Always. <laughs> what what are things? What are some of the things that people don't know about you? Oh, um, I'm. I guess because I'm so prolific online, um, I'm shy in person. Um, I have a I have a lot of social anxiety where I get scared in crowds. Yeah. Um, I pro people probably don't know that I'm a sports freak as much as I am. Like if you're calling me during the Super Bowl, you're not going to get an answer. <laughs> um, last Sunday was the Masters. I was like, don't talk to me. I wouldn't even let my own man talk to me. I'm like, you're disrupting my golf. Like, what do you wow. want? <laughs> <laughs> This is my six hours of watching golf. Um, and that I probably I think what people would be surprised is I'm exactly in person as you'd find on the screen. I'm I'm not a different person. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> <sighs> What's the What's, what's the wildest thing that you've ever done in front of a camera? Oh my, oh, that was the fur, uh, oh, that was the, they like keep graduating. I think my ba my wildest one is I started out of the, nobody starts this out of the gate, um, but my first scene was a blow bang scene. So I was sucking like seven dicks and like my jaw was just screwed by the end of it. Like I went, There was a picture of me when I got there. I was all pretty. And yeah. a picture of me when I left. And my eyes are red. And <laughs> on my face. And I think I had a smoothie that night because I couldn't open my jaw to eat. Oh, um, oh yeah. I was mad. Like, I got home and I was like, I need a bath. Oh. Like, I'm just aching everywhere. Um It's it's just a physical pull, right? Because someone's railing your face for an hour and a half. Your job <laughs> just is the way it is. Like, like yeah. you call the good man, and I'm like, blend me a smoothie, and like, let me sit on the couch with the dog. <laughs> <laughs> That was probably the wildest one I've done yet. But I'll keep going, right? Yeah. <laughs> That was the wildest one so far, I think. Any? <sighs> what are some of, what would you like to do in front of camera that you've never done? Oh my God, I have a huge list. Um, so I've done, I've done MFF, male, female, female, threesome. Probably a male, male, female threesome. I want to work with more crossover stars. Um, I want to do a bi scene. I want to do a gangbang scene. Um, I'll do a DVP scene at some point. Mm. There's like a lot. Yeah, like I there like I've got a lot. Like there's 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 ladder that I will allow myself to go up to, but we're taking the baby steps to those oh. ladders. Just because, you know, yeah, I want to train my body. I don't want to cause myself an injury. Um, <laughs> how not how do you train your body? Well, it's because, like, I'm like, I'm not an 18-year-old girl. Like, I'll break. So I make sure I go to the gym and eat right oh. and get a lot of food. So um, just to make sure I'm strong enough. And so, and that, and then, you know, I'll do throat training. I have a, a friend here that does my throat training. Mm -hmm. Um So I, I do those types of things. Um, but yeah, I like I always say I'll try everything once. And if I don't like it, I'll take it off my no list, right? But <laughs> right now, I think the only thing is on my no list with my agency is no DP right now yeah. and no DA, no double anal. Um, yeah. I was like, yeah, no, we're not, we're not even close to there. Uh, <laughs> so no, no, it's on my list. When he was going through the list, I was like, no. 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 <laughs> not there yet. And he's like, that's okay. <laughs> Didn't think you were, but just wanted to ask. 
<laughs> yeah, I had him in Get Girls too. He thought that was funny. He's like, well, I just wanted to make sure. Like, I don't want to <laughs> assume anything. <laughs> I, don't, you know, I, I don't do a lot of anal scenes but i'm waiting for one to be released um and when that release i'll do more anal collabs but um yeah i got a lot of that i want to do on my list like i'm only in year two i got a probably a lot of, about another four to five years before i'll call her quit oh <laughs> 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 there's a lot that we we we, we will still see we'll, like there's a lot that's coming oh yeah this year is this year will probably be the bigger biggest year coming um probably starting in the summer and ramping up throughout the year you'll see a lot more stuff come up. Mm. briefly send it what was that my love this meeting is being recorded Dre, I saw one of one of your videos. You were wrestling. Please. Oh my God! Oh, well, great. <laughs> yeah, that was. Um, I'd never done that before. I was scared to death because I'm so little. Um, yeah. I was former law enforcement, right, for for a brief period. So, um, I was scared. It was a great scene. I had so much fun. Um, the director Ariel is amazing, and Cody Carter. Yeah, like he put me with Cody Carter. He was undefeated. Like, <laughs> oh, well. But I lost with eight seconds, man. It was eight seconds, and I'm still pissed about this eight seconds. <laughs> okay, anyone, anyone ask me, I'm like, I lost by eight seconds. <laughs> oh, but it was so... I really enjoyed watching it. <laughs> it was a lot harder than I thought it was because you know Cody is so strong. Yeah. Um, I'm not, and you know, so all I could do was let me get as little as I can. Yeah, hold in, and then you know, use my oral skills and just try to be an oral snail. But he won. Anyway. <laughs> Goddamn, Cody, he won anyway. How <laughs> to get that, Cody Carter? <laughs> Oh. What are some of you 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 have mentioned books, reading books. What are some of the books, your favorite books that you've read? Um I my favorite author is a guy by the name of oh I'm gonna sneeze. Sorry, it's I've got allergy season here. Um my favorite author is a guy by the name of Daniel Silva. And he writes uh, uh, spy novels where his character is this guy, Gabriel Alon. And I've probably read, I think he's put out probably about 15 or 20 books. Mm -hmm. And so I wait for this. But I love mystery books, thrillers, um, political ones, spy ones, all of those types of genres. That's my favorite. Your favorite music? I'm a country music, huge fan of country music. Um, that's all that plays on in, in my house, um, mm. in my car, going to bed. Um, I'm a huge, just I've always been a huge country music fan. So that, that's primarily what I listen to. Oh. Well, <sighs> <laughs> I'm actually... <laughs> I, I've lost my train of thoughts. <laughs> oh, no worry. It's been fun. This is fun. It's great. <laughs> I love podcasts. Yeah. <sighs> I, I, I actually don't know what to ask. <laughs> No, that's no big deal. Um, I don't know, like, what more my fans want to know. Um, yeah. I just want them to keep supporting porn and keep learning of it. And yes, we may go through some changes in the industry, but I just want the fans to support us and you know keep buying our content and keep mm -hmm. learning from us and keep enjoying what we do because without the fans, we wouldn't get to do what we do every day. Mm. So we love you guys. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, me 
misconception about being an adult actress. I know you've shared some earlier, but I want you to... Yeah, I think a lot of people think that girls who choose porn don't have any other options or that we're not smart. Um, which is, in this business, you got to be very smart to survive. Um, you know, it's hard. Uh, it's hard work. It's hard mental work because um, mm. we're judged every day. And a lot of us have degrees. Um, and we do this work because we enjoy it and we love doing it and we're not forced to do it. Um, oh. You know, are there, are there cases where that happens? For sure. But if you, you look at, at mainstream porn, um, we police ourselves pretty good. Um, and we all do it because we love it. Um, and we love creating. Um, and yes, we could do other things, but we like being around non-judgment, right? Like mm -hmm. the more non-judgment there is in this world, then I think we would all be a lot better. Yeah. Let's put it that way. <laughs> what's, a, what's your favorite position? Oh my God. Uh, okay. I'm going to think about this one. Hmm. Okay, so one is modified suitcase because I can fold pretty easily. Like I fold like Gumby pretty easily okay. because I'm a low center of gravity, I guess, because I'm short. Um, so I like my head, legs behind my head yeah. or modified prone position. Because if I'm prone, just on prone myself, I can't get my legs underneath me to to push back. But if it's modified prone where I can put my toes on the ground, oh. you're good. <laughs> yeah, then I can use my legs because like my mother was, I'm just trapped. Um, so those are my two favorite positions. And yeah, I think those are my two favorite. Yeah, those are my two favorite ones. Oh. Do you like daily talks? Do you do? Daddy talks. Uh no, I God no, because I'm like an epic fail for dating. Um, thank God that I have this industry because I am not good at dating. Yeah. Um, I'm not good at meeting people that I don't know. Um, the guy that I'm with now, we met by total accident. Apparently, we met on a dating app five years ago. I don't remember. Mm. Um, apparently, I ghosted him. I don't remember. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry about that, hun. Five years later, we got it right. Um, so I'm I'm lucky now, right? Yeah. So you know, between my friends in the industry and uh, you know still in the lifestyle and having a partner, I'm full. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> wait, wait, Drew, please, please give me a minute. This meeting is being recorded. Vri. How do you define success? Oh God, that's a really good question. Um, I'm really hard on myself, so I think I'll define success when I have nothing left to do. That's when I When I have nothing left to do, left more to do, then I'll know I've succeeded, and then I'll stop. But till then, till then I'm not successful, right? So I, till I get all of those things I want to get done, then I'll be successful. But till then I accomplish goals, but I don't quantify that as success. Speaking of goals, how would you, you like to see yourself in the next five to 10 years? I know you've mentioned that you, you want to be you you want to work behind the scene and stuff. I do. I want to. I want to win an AVN uh, or yeah. be nominated for one. Yeah. I want to. I want to work for all my directors that I want to work for. Mm -hmm. I want to eventually go into production and maybe be a director. That's why I, I want to learn from them because mm -hmm. um, there are a lot of female directors. Um, you know, Jackie St. James is kind of an inspiration for me. So I kind of like to look at that. Um, what else? I want to win and be nominated for an X Biz. I want to. God, I have so many goals. I have like a list. Yeah, I think those are the biggest ones. I want to get. I want to get to a place where 
I've done everything. I've seen everything in the industry, and there's nothing to do. Um, and then I'll be done. Um, it's old hat to me when I'm just like, oh, yeah, do you remember when this happened 20 years ago? That's where I want to get to. <sighs> Any upcoming videos that people can look up to? Oh, yeah. Oh, my God. Yeah, I, have a drop, I have a drop a week. Uh, I always have a drop a week. Um, but my adult empire store so just launched. Yeah. So 10 of my top favorite videos are in there and have been remastered and designed. And um, they're full length. And so that's on adult empire. They have that exclusive. Um, and then I just dropped one yesterday that I shot in Vegas. Um, it was shot by Wayne Minor. Um, and so that dropped on many vids yesterday. It goes to OnlyFans tomorrow and it'll be loyal fans on Friday. Oh, is there anything? Oh, and that, yeah, I two free ones on Pornhub too. Visit my Pornhub because you still got me in Pornhub. <laughs> oh, is there anything that you would like to share that I didn't ask? No, I, I just thank you for having me on and, and thank your viewers for watching and um, and supporting us and, and for being the reason we do what we do. Mm. Where can people get hold, of, get hold of you on social media? They can go to my Twitter. I'm Brie Austin 10. Instagram is Brie Austin 10. Um, and if you go to either one of those, it'll hit my link tree and shows all the links to my platforms. Mm. This is the question which I ask all my guests. When it is all said and done, Brie, how would you like to be remembered? I think I'd like to be remembered for being kind um, and helping people and for always being a lot of fun to be around um, and for always having a smile on my face no matter what's happening. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you so much for your time. I really would like to host you again. We we really need to continue. There's a lot that I want us to cover by time. So Any, anytime, my love. I'll be on your show anytime. Thank you so much. You're so welcome.